first attempt at a green-white checker. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson at the front. Clint Boyer and Brad Keselowski trying to steal one here. Green flag. Look at Brad Newman. He, sh he gave Boyer a shot getting out of the line. There goes Newman. Newman's going to take the lead. That's exactly what I knew would happen. That was not pretty. Yeah, when Boyer dove to the inside, he actually got that shot from Ryan Newman, and that right there, you can see that wasn't going to work. Jimmy Johnson comes down, racing Gordon into the corner, but Boyer already has the low groove, and there just wasn't room for three cars in that small a space. Yeah, it was just a bad situation for everybody. I mean, I had a good day. Clearly, those Hendrick cars were class of the field all day long, and... It's the nature of the beast. I don't know what the hell the 10 car was doing. He drove around there for 10 laps and no brakes and finally just stopped. Uh, that was ridiculous. But, uh, you know, I hate it for those guys. I hate it for our guys. You know, we, we ended up 10th uh, and should have been, you know, uh, easily a fourth place finish there. And, you know, you got tires. They don't. They spin the tires. The 39 hits you in the rear. I mean, if I didn't go down there, the 39 was, and we just all run out of real I mean, estate. And, that's the nature of the beast at this place. How about, how about you and Gordon? I saw you down here you were talking to him. No, nah, we're fine. You know, like I said, I hate it for him, too. Uh, you know, we both come out losers, and I do. Well, Clinton and I are friends, you know, and I, I have a lot of respect for him. He's a great race car driver, and I'm glad I talked to him before I talked to you guys because I was pretty mad at him, and uh, he said he got hit from behind, you know, from the 39, and I heard that from, from my team as well. You know, I didn't get the best restart, so when he first showed his nose down there, I thought, okay, you know, but we'll, we'll make it work. But he, he came through there with so much speed, there was no way. And, uh, you know, I had nowhere to go. Jimmy had nowhere to go. And uh, it was pretty unfortunate. You know, I didn't want <laughs> You won the race, but all the talk was, was about, you know, Jeff getting in here. Is this... Story uh... of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Greg Biffle, right? I mean, a guy leads in points. And it's like, how much... Yeah, you guys, do you have to be outspoken, have a personality to get more attention? Is it all about As winning? long as Jeff Gordon's in the race and racing for a bubble, uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> Yes. Bring, it, bring it on, Clint. I love it. I love it, man. Thank God Boyer's back. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to fall asleep if I don't ask something. Uh, We're on cable, by the way. Have you decided what mustache you're going with yet? <laughs> Obviously, it's going to be gray. I, I know that. <laughs> that's a given. That's, a given. Uh, that's what happens when you run a plus 40 class. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> wow. has come so close at this racetrack, leading many laps and not taking home the Grandfather Clark Trophy. A lot of contact between the 15 and the 24 down into turn three last time. Might not be done. Keselowski right there. Oh, a lot of contact this time. That's seven turn left on me getting in the corner. If he's got a problem with me, tell him to come on. Relax, relax, relax. Well, the 24 at the end, I mean, I didn't want to. I was door to door with him and he just turned left to, to block me and I was already there. I mean, I hit the brakes and wheel hopped. You know, I hit him so hard to try to stay off of him, but it was just a, it was a bad deal right there. I mean, you can see, I mean, I was, I was there and he just kept turning left on me. I was like, hey, you better not do that. But uh, um, it is what it is. I mean, it was a, it was a good day for us. Yeah, you know, we were on the outside and I mean, we were sitting ducks on the outside. So I was just trying to get down and um, you know, I felt like I got down in front of him, but maybe I didn't. I don't know. I haven't seen the video, but uh, pretty typical uh, Martinsville and Clint Boyer in the 24 car here. I mean, it's not the first time. You know, I like Clint a lot. We race really hard together, and we, we were just racing hard right there. What does it mean for your team? There's that contact on the left rear. A good day gone bad again for Jeff Gordon in this chase. Where is he? I'm getting his ass. It's 24. He's probably looking for you. I know he's a moron for doing it. You need to be on your toes when you get to him. What did he do? I mean, I, I just barely accidentally touched him. He hit me in the right rear. Do what you gotta do to get by him. I'll give him a chance to wreck you. 
He's turning Clint Boyer into the wall, collecting Joey Logano. Caution flag is out. Alvarola slides in. Did the leader take the white flag before the caution came out? Limit to the garage is straight, right? Jeff has been summoned to the NASCAR hauler for a post-race visit. Well, they said they were let him have at it. That's having at it right there. Uh, that's a year's worth of frustration. Oh, conflict. The crews are in it. Somewhere in the middle of that is Jeff Gordon. Yeah, I'm sure Clint Boyer wants his opportunity at this. Can't really blame him. That's stupid. I don't know. It's kind of crazy that a champion will take out like that, but two races, you know, Homestead, if we have nothing to lose, I'm pretty sure we'll get it, you know, pretty exciting down there, but this is a freaking shame that uh, this team is running so hard every week that shit like that happens. It's just a shame, man. You know, the last person in the world you want to get into anything with is Jeff Gordon on the racetrack. I mean, you're down there racing. Uh, the track's extremely slick. We're all on, on tires. I didn't even need to pass him. That's the thing. You know, I, I was always doing is riding around, buying my time. The only thing I had to do is keep the five car within reach. So for him to, to act like that, I mean, I barely touched him, and then I feel him get into uh, turn three and try to turn me, and he missed. And then next thing I know, Brett's telling me on the radio that he's he's trying to, you know, he's waiting on me. I mean, it's just, uh, it makes us all look like a, a bunch of, uh, you know, retards. It's, it's pretty embarrassing for a four-time champion. And, and you know, what I consider uh, one of the best this sport's ever seen to act like that. It was just it's completely ridiculous. What was the gist of NASCAR's discussion with you inside? I don't know. Just whatever. I mean, there's nothing you can do to fix it now. It's over with. You got to go on a homestead and... and I got to try to beat the five car, but I mean, that was my opportunity to try to get myself back in the championship hunt. Um, you know, when, you, when you're disrupting a championship run like that, it's, it's too bad. They ask us not to do that in a uh, driver's meeting, and there's usually a lot of respect there. Like I said, it was just it's crazy. I, I didn't even need to pass him. <laughs> I, I was plenty content riding behind him, and he slipped up down there. I get under him, and here he comes back. I just barely touched him. I mean, I literally barely rubbed him. And then all of a sudden, I, I feel him trying to retaliate, and I don't know, I missed or something, hit the wall, and made himself look like a fool. Is it over with, or do you think there's some retaliation that's due him? 
Just have to see. Let's take a look. NASCAR handed these penalties down less than an hour ago. Jeff Gordon fined $100,000, 25 driver points on probation until December 31st. Rick Hendrick docked 25 owner's points. Crew Chief Alan Gustafson, probation. Clint Boyer's crew chief on probation until December 31st, slapped with a $25,000 fine. Their Michael Waltrip Racing issued this statement this afternoon. The goal of Michael Waltrip Racing is to be a championship-level organization, both on the track and off. The on-track incident, which occurred during the Sunday Phoenix race, was extremely disappointing and brought raw emotion of a long and hard championship battle to the surface. Though we generally cannot control certain actions on the track, the unfortunate reactions off the track Sunday did not live up to the professional standards in which Michael Waltrip Racing expects all of its representatives to live by. Again, Brian Pat you know, last week, the, the thing that I, I regret and, and the thing that I messed up on is that I allowed my anger and, and my emotions, you know, to, to put me in a position to make a bad choice. And, you know, I, I, I felt like that, um, you know, Clinton needed to be dealt with, but that wasn't the right way to go about it, certainly not the right time. Um, and, and what I hate most about it is, is that you know, other guys were involved with it, you know, and affected their day. At, at Martinsville this year, we were going for our 200th win. It was the first time I had my brother's wa a wife there, and the first time Jan Jackson, that represented DuPont, was there since the crash. We had a photo session before the race, and we were all wanting to win more than anything, more than any championship. The 200th win at Martinsville meant so much to all of us because we lost so much there. And that was taken away from us. It, both of our cars were wrecked on the last lap and next to the last lap, and it was by the 15 car. You didn't see our guys go down there and fight in the pits. We didn't do any of that. I have never hurt as bad in my life leaving the racetrack as I did that day. Uh, I, it took me a week or so to get over it just because we had it in our grasp. And that's just emotions that we carry and nobody else. So, you know, I, I think everybody thinks I just intentionally went down and wrecked him. And that, that's not the case. You know, it, 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 I wanted to make his life really miserable, you know, and, and I wanted to make my car really, really wide. But, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting him to go diving down the inside on the apron. And, and you know, when he did, it, it, it caused us to, to hook and, and caused what ended up being... A, a terrible accident. Fair to say, one of the more tumultuous weeks of his storied NASCAR Sprint Cup career. Set the flag go, and a win at Homestead for Jeff Gordon. Hey, I'm proud of you guys. That was awesome. Well, Jeff, hold on. There was a lot in the news this week, of course, regarding you. And then, of course, you and Clint Boyer end the race as his kids come into victory lane. You two battling at the end, Jeff. Is this just redemption after what happened last week? Can, can you believe that, uh, you know, I, I mean, there was one restart where I had Joey and uh, maybe even Eric and Clint right there surrounding me. And, you know, we, uh, you know, the, the, that thing is going to going to work itself out some way through racing. And, I, I, you know, I felt terrible about how I went about it. And I still uh, regret the way I went about it. And um, you know what? But I can't take it back. What we can do is look forward and, and race guys as hard and clean as we possibly can. And. Um,